Hey guys, JD here with the Kawasaki Ultra 310 Jet Ski. And I'm going to show you how I used a Riva Map Tuner X and a PLX Wideband Controller in order to collect critical AFR data on this Kawasaki Ultra 310 running Riva Racing ECU tunes. The performance and reliability of my machine and ultimately of your machine are my top priorities. So as you guys know, I'm doing the monster build on my ski right now. And that involves upgrading to the Riva Stage 3 Supercharger Pulley and Riva Stage 3 ECU Tune. I've been doing quite a few supporting mods, including the Cowie Performance Cold Air Intake, the Cowie Performance High Flow Fuel Pump Kit, the Cowie Performance Supercharger Relief Valve Bypass Filter here, and then, of course, I've got the Cowie Performance Automatic Tensioner Assembly with stainless pulley. I've got some upgrades to my fuel rail to accommodate um, slightly higher pressure. And then on this ski, it's got full maintenance done to it. Um, a brand new supercharger belt, brand new oil change, brand new spark plugs. It's also got a jet pump that was just rebuilt within the last... 50 hours or so and is in perfect condition also the valve lash has just been adjusted and reshimmed so so this engine really is um, operating at peak performance right now and that's to ensure that i'm getting uh, the most accurate data possible finally this is incredibly important if you have a stage one stage two or especially a stage three tune make sure you're always putting fresh 93 octane premium gasoline in your machine if you're not in the united states that might be rated a little bit differently this product is incredible, K100. Their trademark is literally, we make water burn. This is a great product to add to your tank at every fill up um, and when your ski is stored especially. So if you're going with the Riva Stage 3 kit like me, you need to have fresh 93 octane at every single run. So every one of these mods that I've just shown you, I have complete installation tutorials on my channel for all these parts. There are no major engine internal changes being made. These are all bolt on over the counter parts. And you can remove all of these parts and put your machine back to stock if you really wanted to. There are no permanent modifications, no drilling. And uh, I wanted to keep it that way for this feature because I want to show you that, you know, you could install all these parts, you know, in your driveway at your house the same way I do it here on my channel. So this exhaust pipe here was made for me by Cowie Performance. Now I'm going to show you all the different cables you'll need in order to connect this sensor to your map tuner. The PLX uh, we like to use, but MapTuner actually sells their own device now. Um, it's a bit pricey. Now keep in mind, I'm doing all my testing with full tank of fuel, all right? Full gear, I've got this filled to the top with gear, anchors. What I wanna provide is real world results, right? We're not racing, I'm not racing, I'm a recreational offshore rider. And so I wanna provide you with results that would be typical. And then again, a full tank of fuel, uh, full gear, you know, 20, 30 pounds of gear, maybe. Reva Racing, they're obviously getting better results because they're doing this in a test in a freshwater environment with a very lightweight rider with low fuel. So we already have those results from Reva. So teaming up with Cowie Performance, we wanted to show what are real life results and then what kind of uh, air fuel ratios are we getting um, at extended full throttle runs with the Reva Stage 1, 2, and 3 tunes now keep in mind all of this testing is done with the cowie performance high flow fuel pump assembly we found that the stock the oem fuel pump assembly cannot support anything greater than a stock configuration on this engine so again let me let me repeat that if you are planning to run additional boost by by installing a smaller supercharger pulley if you're planning to run a stage one I know the manufacturers say you're fine with the stock fuel pump. Our initial testing has revealed that the stock fuel pump cannot keep up with the fuel demands of the engine and results in a lean condition. So you want to avoid running this engine lean at all expense. You do not want to run this engine lean. So again, if your machine is stock and you're running your stock fuel pump, you'll be fine. If you go to stage one, stage two, or stage three, especially stage two or stage three, you need to upgrade your fuel pump, whether that's the Cowie Performance Assembly, whether that's the KRP Assembly I'm gonna feature, or whether you make your own Franken pump, you need to have 250 liters per hour. 
if you're planning to run stage one, two, or three on this machine. All right, so the PLX controller and the Map Tuner X need to be on board the jet ski at all times in order to collect the data we need. So first, let's look at the connections for the PLX. This is the O2 sensor lead. I've run this through the main sheathing there so you could see it kind of comes out. So this is gonna go right in to the controller right here. So here I've got my PLX controller wired into the factory harness just using the plug that they use for the cigarette uh, plug or for the USB charger. Here's our main connector. And then here is our 12 volt power. So next, here's our lead. This is a Kawasaki diagnostic cable to HDMI port. This is from Riva. Now you can plug that into the map tuner directly and, and get your normal engine data, but you won't be able to get AFR data unless we link the PLX into the system here. And uh, we're gonna do that with this Riva cord here. This has an HDMI adapter on one end, it's split off, and then it gives you HDMI and 3.5 millimeter connector. This is going to the map tuner, so we're gonna plug this into the TX. All right, so on our PLX, we have our 12 volt power. We're plugging our 3.5 millimeter connector from that map tuner harness into TX. And then here is our main HDMI from our Kawasaki diagnostic port. This is gonna plug directly into this little connector here. Now again, in salt water like this, because these are on board, I wrap these all with electrical tape before I go out. And then when I come back, I remove the electrical tape, clean everything up. Here is our map tuner splitter cable. And again, I'll just show you that that's map tuner. And then that's part 01-MT019-2. So you'll put that aside and then you have HDMI right here. This is gonna go into your map tuner, all right? And I suggest what I typically do is I have both of these in a plastic bag like this. And then I zip tie the bag right at the point here and then wrap some electrical tape just to make sure no water gets in there. So now I've got power on my machine and right away I'll just show you if we go to monitoring. You'll see that we now have that Lambda data right there. So once you got this connected, if I fire the machine up, And this is really cool. It gives you a ton of data on this display. Keep in mind that this battery voltage that you're seeing on the map tuner is way different. So here you can see on my display 13.3. So this here is about a whole volt below. Um, and that's just due to this harness, I think. I think there's a little bit of loss, a little bit of a loss from this harness and from having the PLX. All right, so let's take a look at some of the data that we collect with the map tuner and I'll show you some of the software that is included with Riva map tuner. All right, so here's my laptop and here's my map tuner. I've got it connected with the Riva USB to USB cable for the map tuner. Again, this is cable 01-MT015. I believe that does come with the map tuner. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our map tuner application. Okay, so once the map tuner application is open, we can hit synchronize this process will just update. Uh, you can see there it's got some firmware updates. You always wanna make sure to keep this as up to date as possible. And then log files right here, if you click on log files, this is gonna show you all the log files that are logged in your map tuner. So then you just basically click on those, right click, and you're gonna hit save. So this is another uh, software that's used with the map tuner. This is Megalog Viewer HD. All right, so here is Megalog Viewer. And this is a log viewer that you can use to view these files. So you could just go to file, you could go to open, then you could go to where you have those log files stored. So here I've got some data plotted out for you. And I've got things broken out. You can change the quick view here. But I've got engine speed. You can see my maximum engine speed was 8,005 RPM. And uh, it looks like our Lambda maxed out at 1.010, which you can see is that spike right there. So I don't think that was necessarily accurate, just a, a blip in the data there. You can see our throttle opening, throttle was at full position, boost pressure, 30.45 PSI. So that's including atmospheric pressure. So that's basically exactly 15 PSI of boost, just a little bit over. You can see right there, our AFR maximum was 14.8. Again, that was at that spike right there. So 
um, the average AFR was 11.51 for this entire run. And then our speed there, the maximum was 118 kilometers per hour, which is just over 73 miles an hour. So this tune is rated from Riva at 8,000 RPM. So Riva advertises 76 miles an hour at 8,000 RPM. So my results, you know, were close. But again, keep in mind that their tests are done on perfect fresh water with a lightweight rider with very low fuel. My test was done in not ideal conditions. And um, again, I had full fuel, full gear. So I think these are pretty good results. We hit our target 8,000 RPM, 15 PSI a boost, and um, 118 kilometers per hour, which is just over 73 miles per hour. So performance-wise, the machine is operating correctly. Um, if I would have reduced drag a little bit, we could have gained a little bit of speed. Lambda average was 0.783 with a maximum of one, which that was that blip in the data. So I'm not too concerned about that blip. Um, accelerator opening, you can see maximum. That's four volts going to the throttle body plate. Inlet air pressure, 30.45 PSI. You can see that um, it's about 14 PSI atmosphere. So that's the full calculated figure, including boost. So we're running just over 15 PSI boost there at 8,005 RPM. And then AFR, the maximum 14.85, that was a bit high. The average 11.51. And then the vehicle speed maximum um, was 118 kilometers per hour with an average of 66.35. So looking at this overall, you could see that during these accelerated, uh, these were holding full throttle. You could see that our Lambda here um, was pretty safe. We did have this blip in AFR and Lambda. This did not occur on prior runs, so that is just um, sometimes the sensor will, will feed incorrect data. That's why those sensors have to be changed often. So this is just some things you could do with the Megalog viewer. Uh, very neat. So, so far, all our testing has revealed very safe parameters for the Riva Stage 1 and Riva Stage 2 tunes. Once I put my Riva Stage 3 pulley and tune on the ski, we'll be getting additional data that I'll share with you. So now that I've completed the Stage 1 and Stage 2 testing on this Ultra 310, we are gearing up to install this beautiful Riva Racing 101 millimeter Stage 3 pulley. This is what separates this Riva pulley from the competition, and that's that it includes this oversized stainless steel idler pulley with a replaceable Japanese-made bearing. Now, why is this important? Well, if you try to run an idler pulley that's not stainless steel on a saltwater machine, it deteriorates very, very quickly. This is an OEM Kawasaki idler pulley. This one has 50 hours on it. Look at this. And you might say, oh, that's, you don't maintain your machine. Hey guys, look at my machine. This is a saltwater machine with almost 300 hours. You'll be hard pressed to find a machine in existence right now that's as well maintained as this one. And so this is not on me. This is, this is Kawasaki's fault, this pulley. Look at this crap. This is a complete hunk of garbage. And some competitors include a steel pulley as well. Not going to fly on JD's Waterworld. As those pulleys degrade, they destroy your belt. And that means decreased performance. So I only run stainless. You can see right now I've got a Cowie Performance standard size stainless idler pulley. I've got the Cowie Performance stock size supercharger pulley in my machine right now. And before, you know, I recommend this, I will be getting this AFR data to show you that this pulley is safe to run on your machine. I'm not just gonna say, hey, buy this. I'm gonna say, hey, these are my results. This is why, you know, this is safe, or maybe it won't be, but it'll be safe. Riva, Riva does a good job. You know, you can't get higher quality parts than this. And I'm extremely thankful to Cali Performance and to Riva Racing for um, making this happen, uh, to send me these components to share with you. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more exclusive jet ski content only on JD's Waterworld.